25 days and counting into the federal government shutdown, the impact is being felt far and wide. In Florida, John Yang found the ripple effects reaching the swamps of the Everglades, the tourist-packed airports, and even future weather forecasts. You guys are okay to get a little wet? For 17 years, nature guide Garl Harold has been making a living leading tours through Everglades National Park. If you look on the trees, you can actually see the water line. And pretty soon it'll be completely dried up. Taking people from around the world, like this couple from Germany, slogging through cypress swamps for up-close encounters with alligators, snakes, and an array of other wildlife. So we got red-shouldered hawks in here. There's actually a nest up around the corner. But the government shutdown is taking a big bite out of his business. It's really slowing down. How slow? Pretty slow. Our numbers are down and um, we're getting cancellations from especially Europe and abroad because they don't want to come here. While the gates are open, there's no one to collect entry fees and some apparently believe the park is closed. As a result, business is drying up for Harold and other guides. How squeezed are you right now and financially? Pretty tight, very tight. Actually, I've gone through most of my savings to just make my mortgage and the car payments and insurance. It would likely be even worse if it weren't for people like Peter Campbell. He does the daily chores that National Park Service workers did before the shutdown. It's worth it to go down there to Flamingo. Staffing the main visitor center's information desk, taking out the trash, even cleaning the men's room. Being a former school principal, it's not unusual to have to clean restrooms, so. Campbell's work is being funded by the nonprofit Florida National Parks Association. This is what everybody comes to see. Jim yeah. Sutton it's runs the group. He says it's literally paying to keep the lights on. So you're paying for the electricity? Yes. Who's paying for the toilet paper? I am. Who's paying for the soap? I am. Some of the money comes from the park's gift shops, where business has also dropped during the shutdown. Spending more to maintain the park now could mean tough decisions in the future. But Sutton doesn't see any other choice. My logic is it's much easier to maintain it now than it is to catch up later whenever the government does reopen. This couldn't come at a worse time for the Everglades and the businesses around it that rely on tourists. This is when they make their money. And once it's lost, it's lost forever. You can tell it's natural because see how it breaks up when you stir it? For Garl Harold, it's the second bad season in a row. Last winter, the park was recovering from Category 5 Hurricane Irma. Of what you make in a year, how much do you make in this period? Most of it. So if you lose business now... Then it's hard to catch back up. And we're already suffering from Irma. How worried are you? Pretty worried. <laughs> My daughter is into her cell phone right now. Worry is something Cassandra Blackman knows well. She's a TSA officer at the Fort Lauderdale Airport, a single mom who's not getting a paycheck. I have a 15-year-old and a 10-year-old, and it's hard to explain to them that I'm not getting a paycheck because they see you go to work. Nationwide, 51,000 TSA agents are on the job without pay during the shutdown. Miami International Airport is one of several where officers are calling out sick, so many that this past weekend, one concourse closed early. Blackman says morale is so low that some of her TSA colleagues may quit. If President Trump or members of Congress <laughs> were, were here, what would you say to them? I have what do I say to them? I, you know, I don't even think I can say that on TV. <laughs> it's disgusting. It's very immature. It's like, I'm not getting what I want, so I'm going to whine about it and make the poor people suffer more. Yeah. All right, mix it in. Mix it in. Eric Blake's family is down oh, to yeah, one paycheck. Here, here, just add a little bit His of this. wife, Suzanne. Oh, yeah. He's a meteorologist at the National Hurricane Center in Miami working without pay. If he misses another paycheck, their financial forecast is bleak. Right now, I'm staring at a host of crisp bills, not really knowing how I'm going to pay them. Uh, I've paid the, the, the minimums on my credit cards, I've cut all the non essential, uh, non essential purchases. Blake's work is considered essential, but nearly 200 scientists who would be preparing for the next hurricane season 
are furloughed. Every year we really focus uh, our efforts on making better hurricane forecasts, uh, intensity and track. Uh, we really pride ourselves on it and right now we're just unable to do it. We have a list of dozens of things we're trying to do. Right now we're not doing any of them. And the center had to cancel the first of three training classes for emergency managers from hurricane prone areas. The other two are in doubt. Is it too much of a stretch to say that not working on the models now could cost lives in the coming hurricane season? It's not really that much of a, a stretch. If I were moving to Florida and I want my emergency manager to have the best possible information uh, to make their decision, uh, and without uh, the training and outreach uh, that the Hurricane Center does with FEMA, uh, it, just, it just isn't possible. While Blake worries about the hurricane season ahead, Cassandra Blackman, the TSA officer, is just trying to weather the shutdown. It's ridiculous. It's, it's not fair to the, the middle class and the poor people because a lot of federal employees are middle class. You don't qualify for anything. You make too much or you don't make enough. So we're stuck in the middle and to not receive a paycheck is like, is, is really devastating. And nature guide Garl Harold is slogging through one step at a time. Just keep in mind, if it wasn't for the volunteers that are keeping the bathrooms cleaned and doing the stuff they're doing, we wouldn't have been able to do this. As he and others search for ways to survive the government shutdown. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm John Yang in Everglades National Park.